This is a response to the amazing atheist. Hello there. This is a response to your video. What is God? Uh, which, yeah, I don't have any any particular quarrel with what you're saying there, TJ. But uh, I just want to come at that from a slightly different, on a perverse <laughs> reading of it, to be honest with you. And uh, if, if anybody's watching this who doesn't know me, I'm an atheist, so I'm not coming here to argue any kind of theological position. But I am interested in psychology and cognitive science and perception and. Uh, you know how knowledge works, how science works, how those personal experiences get turned into objective truths that you know empirical, rational processes can lead us to. And those, that's my general area of interest. Uh, so I'm thinking about you know this "what is God" question from that perspective, and I'm thinking: is there a way of thinking about this God idea? And I'll need to redefine it in a minute. Is there a way of thinking about the God idea as uh, a mental function, a function of the brain? But not as an aberrant function, because there's plenty of theories around that talk about the, the, the God idea as being a brain function. But usually it's aberrant, or primitive, or a delusion. You know, Dawkins talks about it as a delusion, as something that the brain does by mistake, something that the you know the, the primitive human mind does by mistake to to quell its fears, or to um, to wield authority, or to um, to shore up failing institutions. You know, those kind of things. Uh, and I think that's accurate. I think there are ways of. Uh, I think that is a very particularly valid interpretation. And then there's other um, kind of cognitive or psychological understandings of God, which talk about this misfirings in certain parts of the brain. Um, you know, there's a guy called Persinger working in uh, Canada, I think he is, where he does this thing with this, uh, like a magic wand, a big magnetic thing that he puts near certain parts of the brain, and apparently can induce feelings of the presence of a of a power in your, you know, in the, in the room with you. Uh, you know, suggesting that, you know, if you do something funny to a particular part of the brain, it'll give you that feeling that some people might associate with God. But again, I think that's crap, really. You know, I don't, um, well, it's not crap. I just think that's not a particularly interesting interpretation of it. So I'm thinking, is there an interpretation of the word God, which would admittedly define, demand reinterpretation, uh, but, you know, which is potentially useful and um, interesting? And maybe accounts for some of the stuff that uh, that you were talking about there, the amazing atheist, in terms of what kind of powers we attribute to this this thing, this being. Uh, and here I'm uh, I'm looking again at the writings of Antonio Damasio, the neuroscientist. I'm I'm trying to process his information recently, so I'm making lots of videos about Damasio. Um, but what he says there in his latest book, Self Comes to Mind, is this. Um, He's saying that you know, there's a, a structure in the, in, the, in the oldest part of the brain, what's sometimes called the reptilian part of the brain. In fact, the brain stem, which is a really, really ancient part of the brain. We've had it for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, yeah, millions of years, really. And, and most, well, all sentient creatures have it, right down to things like tadpoles and invertebrate animals have this structure. And what he identifies there is activity which correlates to a very basic awareness sentience. Not all the kind of rich consciousness that we have as human beings of, you know, seeing things and having memories and having autobiographies of our lives and being able to use language and all that kind of stuff that we've got. Uh, but one part of that, you know, the part of that that makes it feel like something. You know what I mean? Because I could be looking out on this stuff. All this information could be pouring through my eyes of this little coast here in Cornwall. It could be pouring in right now, but, you know, there could be nothing going on inside my head. But the fact there is going something, something going on, the fact that it, it is like something to be here, as the way they put it, you know, it has a, a feeling to it. Um, in Damasio, it says that feeling come, the neural correlate of that moment, of that function, is this thing in the brainstem. And as I say, all creatures have it, although they, they wouldn't have the same kind of, of elaborated consciousness. They'll have this basic sentience, but it would elaborate in different ways according to the needs of the particular organism and probably wouldn't elaborate in the way that makes it unified in the way that ours is because our consciousness feels like it's all one thing you know we don't feel as if we've got memory going on here and uh, ex you know, experience of the visual world here and experience of the auditory world here it feels like it's unified uh, it, it's quite likely that many other animals won't have that in fact there's good evidence that rabbits for example don't have that and snakes don't have that either um, What's all that going to? Oh yeah, so so this basic thing that uh, that Damasio was talking about, this really simple structure in the brainstem, which seems to give the, if I can talk in romantic terms, a kind of spark of awareness to all that stuff, 
uh, you know, is there a, a way of thinking about that as a candidate for God? Now, Damasio uses the term soul. You know, he's a secularist, if not a flat-out atheist himself. You know, so um, he has no truck with any of that spiritual stuff. But uh, he does use the word soul. But again, he's, he's repurposing the word not to mean with all the trappings that religion has placed on it and perverted and uh, and and used and you know all that stuff uh, so but I'm just going to try using the word God there instead of soul see what happens so if that very basic spark is God uh, you know is there a way of thinking through that into a lot of the mythologies and there's a lot of stuff that you critique or that you identify in uh, the God concept as it's held by you know contemporary religious believers people who, who are of the Islamic faith or of the Christian faith uh, and for me the biggest and probably most important distinction is that it's to do with cre the, uh, creation, I suppose. Creation and the relationship between the physical world as revealed by the senses and shared through processes like rational empirical science. Um, that, the relationship between that and this core consciousness, the spark of awareness in the brain stems, the, the, the location of sentience. Uh, because one thing's for sure, if you haven't got that location of sentience, then nothing else happens. You know, it, it, whether you're a tadpole or a lizard or a, a rabbit or a snake or a dog or a human, you have to have that first, that brainstem thing going on first, in order to be able to build on it, to accumulate um, and aggregate all these different functions together to make more complex elaborated consciousnesses, whether that be human or, or of a different order. Uh, but that has to be in place. So in a sense, you know, in the beginning, at the beginning of something, was this entity, which is this, uh, just a brain, just a structure in the brain, physical structure, which does a particular job. Um, and then it goes on to do things, you know, the, 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 the rest of, of the created, perceived, phenomenal world becomes possible once that's in place. And in, in, in a sense, you could say it even creates the rest of those things, because we'd have no awareness of this stuff around us if it wasn't for that. So on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, that basic awareness is bringing the world into being for us. You know, it is doing all those things that, uh, that, that are attributed to God the Creator. It is bringing the world into being and making it a, a, a live, experienced place, not just a, 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 the place dis as accurately described by physical sciences. It's, it's, it's an experienced place as well for us. Uh, so in that sense, God does create the God I'm talking about, God the brainstem, does create the world. Uh, presumably created it in the beginning at some point. There must have. There must have been a first, a first time for all this stuff, as well as continuing to bring it in existence, into existence with each moment of our conscious awareness. Uh, and I would have no problem with that. In fact, I think you could probably... Actually, I might do this. I think you could probably do a kind of perverse reading of Genesis, which lays out the processes by which that creation happens. But it's not the creation of the physical world. It's the creation of the experience of the physical world. The creation of consciousness and the elaboration of consciousness in human terms. Uh, I think where religious folk are wrong, 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 is confusing the, uh, you know, the, 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 this creator God, confusing the creator God that creates consciousness, which is just a brain function, fine, confusing that with the creation of all this stuff, you know, the Cornish coastline, with its millions of years history written into the rocks not 6,000 years. Uh, yeah, so I think if you make that error, if you think, you know, if you've, um, I don't know, maybe there's some psychology book which went through a time portal and somebody picked it up a couple of thousand years ago and thought they were reading about how the, how the universe came into being when actually they were just reading When Self Comes to Mind by Antonio Damasio and it was really about the, the creation of elaborated human consciousness through the developments out of this core self in the brainstem. And they all thought, fucking hell, this is how the world came into being. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah, that'll, that'll do, I think. Look at that. Can you see the lighthouse over there? Isn't that beautiful?